Hi guys and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we're going to be painting the Black Legion. Right, before we get stuck in with the tutorial, I'd just like a few minutes to talk about how I like to go about painting black. This is just one of the many ways I will paint black. I'll try to get a few different examples in this video if I can. Right, so as you can see in the example provided here, I have got a few different paints laid out. At the top label number one, we've got the Templar Black Contrast Paint. And below that what we've got is we've got the mix that I like to use myself uh, to paint black. Now this is something I've picked up from oil painting and I've transitioned into my miniature painting over the past year or so. i found it to be really really useful. Now I won't go into the details too much of that so we can get on with the, the tutorial. But if you are interested in more information just google chromatic blacks and there's plenty of information out there for you. Right, so the way I make black is by mixing blue and brown, in this case ultramarine's blue and wildwood. And to either side of that we add either more blue or more brown to get warmer or cooler tones of grey. What you can then see to either side of that, to the right, we have mixed two parts of wildwood and one part of ultramarine's blue. And to the left we've got two parts of ultramarine's blue and one part of wildwood. The reason we're doing this is to give ourselves some cooler tones and some warmer tones. The warmer tones, this can be done either way around, but for this for this tutorial I'll be using the warmer tones for deeper shadows and the cooler tones for highlights. Right, in case you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about, there's a quick example here of a similar effect used on Games Workshop box art where they've used blue highlights and brown highlights on two different areas to make two different blacks, the cloak and the armour parts. And also a quick example here on a model, please ignore the highlights, this was just a, a rough tester model, it's just mainly the turns I was interested in and hopefully you can see the effects that we're going to try to achieve today on this model. Right, so on with the tutorial, as you can see I haven't had the chance to clean up this model properly because I'm out of green stuff and things like that and I really wanted to get on with doing some content today. Right, so we're working off a wraith bone undercoat today. And our first colour is going to be Space Wolves Grey. Now you might wonder why I went into all of that information on the mixes earlier on. And that information is still valid. I left it in there because it's really useful and we will be using that. However, luckily enough, the cool tone we would have mixed using the two parts blue and a part brown is very similar, almost identical to Space Wolves Grey. So... Uh, fortunately for us, we can just use a pre-made version of this. So as usual, we're being careful with this. Uh, don't mind, don't worry if you do go over the lines and things we can touch with the model, but for the most part, we're just trying to paint in the parts of the armour which will be black. And a nice liberal coat to start establishing some of these shadows and highlights. As you can see, I've got the brightness ramped up pretty high in this video. Well, that's just to allow you to see the areas I'm painting better, rather than just a, an overpowering white undercoat, or red button undercoat, should I say.
We're also filling in the seals with this colour as we're going to be leaving them a bluey grey. Right, so that's the first coat done, we just leave that to dry. And back in there with our second coat of Space Wolves Grey. Leaving the edge highlights as usual, creating more shadows. Now what the heavy metal team like to do is apply edge highlights, especially on darker colours, on surfaces which don't even have an edge, such as shoulder pads and these small little parts that I'm painting. Uh, we're going to simulate that by simply painting a, an extra layer in the middle of the area, so leaving the edges lighter still. Sometimes we'll go in there and apply a third layer if we're not happy with the contrast between light and dark. And as you can see, what we are doing is we are feathering this to make sure that there's no harsh lines on the model. So feathering, if you don't already know what that means, is basically we've removed the paint from the brush after we've applied the paint. Uh, with, a dry, with a dry brush, it's still damp from the paint, but we will then blend that, those edges.
a little bit of extra work on the shoulder pad here as it's easier at this point than later on and it's such a, a large focal point on a model. And now we're going to apply a liberal coat of Agrax Airshade all over the parts we've painted Space Wolves grey. This is the equivalent of applying the brown mix that I explained in the intro of the video. And as you can see by using colour theory, the moment we apply this translucent layer of brown over a blue, we get black. The deeper the blue from our undercoat, the deeper the black is we'll get. So that's the tip. If you want a darker armour, just apply heavier layers of blue. If you want it to be lighter and smoky like I've chosen for this model, then you know you don't have to go too deep with the blue and you'll get some nice browns come through as well, which will all add to the effect of creating shadows of black. As you can see this is giving us a really deep smoky looking black. The reason I went for this choice is I was inspired by reading some information on the Black Legion and the fact that their armour isn't necessarily always painted black and sometimes what they've actually done is they've scorched, they've burnt the colours of the Legion, the previous Legions, off their armour leaving a, a really nice smoky black and that's what inspired me to go this way. A lot of people struggle with black, um, and I can understand why. When we're painting the colour black, we're not necessarily trying to paint black. If it was, we'd just use the colour black. What we're trying to do is we're trying to paint the shadows and the reflections. So essentially, we're trying to paint greys and browns, which is where this theory really comes where it comes into its own. Really quick example here: the model credited is Flibble, my pet rabbit. And as you can see, when there are no clear edges to highlight or define, uh, you've got to rely on browns and greys to really define an object which, which I feel can be done a little bit more creatively than just highlighting an edge. Right, and now on to the gold trim. So we start with giving all of the areas a wash of Seraphim Sepia. Leave the odd edge highlight here and there, pure Wraith Bone, just to add a little bit of contrast.
By this point you may be noticing just how dark the black we've already painted is now looking. Um, you may have been a little bit concerned that it was a little bit too light and a little bit charcoal, but now by putting another colour, another light colour, next to the black you can really see the contrast of how dark it now makes the model look to the, heart, <coughs> to the eye. Sorry. And if it is still too light for your liking, you do want it a little bit darker, you can just go over the whole thing with a really thin coat of non oil, and that will darken it down a lot for you. It's all personal preference. Remember, there's no right or no wrong way to paint. The only thing we're trying to do here is enjoy a hobby. And now on to Iandan Yellow, which is going to be our middle turn. If you are like me and no scientist when it comes to light placement, do exactly what I'm doing here and just get an example off the internet that somebody else has already painted and just follow their example of where to place these shadows. Be careful not to cover all of the model though, you do want to leave some of that sepia through uh, for your highlights. I'd say off the top of my head as a ratio, you maybe want 50% of this to be covered with the yellow, to be glazed with the yellow and the other 50% to be left sepia. Right, and on to our deepest shadows, and we will just be using Agrax Earth Shade for this. I did try a mix of Nuln Oil and Agrax to start at the beginning of this video. I wasn't happy with the results, so I moved on to just using pure Agrax. So 
so we're applying this to our deepest shadows, maybe 20% overall coverage, there's no, there's no golden ratio for this. And just making sure this is around all of the studs and in all of the recesses. So there we have it, it really is as simple as that. It might not be the most amazing non-metallic metal gold effect you've ever come across. However, for the amount of time we have to spend on it, I'm I'm gonna say it's pretty good. Uh, I mean, this overall, this stage maybe took, what, 20, 30 minutes at most. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the results of this. Right, so that's it for part one. In part two, what I will do is I will use that opportunity to paint some different kinds of black and we'll use the mixes that we used at the beginning of the videos to get some different effects so you don't feel like I've just wasted your time with all of that and uh, you, you see hopefully the usefulness of that. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll just finish off some of the, the finer details. So yeah, hopefully see you in part two.